So for the last 15 minutes, uh, I like to, to show um, two very specific vignettes how the VTI1 process uh, is run. And again, this is about a deliberative democratic uh, policy making process. And we're talking about a multinational company that seems to have infinite uh, capital resources and a very skyrocketing kind of valuation and that runs legal green, illegal red, or somewhere in between, like in Taiwan, which is Uber. And I assume everybody here have at least heard of Uber. It is a company with enormous lobbying power. Um, so the, the story with Uber in Taiwan is that it started operating all of a sudden in Taipei without asking anybody. And then uh, it swiftly becomes uh, illegal because the Ministry of Transportation issued a ruling says it's illegal, you're not a taxi. Now the Uber appealed saying the Ministry of Transport has no say to their trade because they are like eBay, a platform the Ministry of Economics should have to say. And then the Ministry of Finance kind of disagreed, and so on. So actually, nobody in the government uh, is like the, the known owner of this consultation. So after we run the first batch of a dozen or so, uh, ministry proposed uh, uh, consultations on V Taiwan. We made a poll because we also want the agenda setting to be bottom up. We asked all the working group participants, if it's up to you, what kind of things do you want to talk about aside from the things that the ministries already talk about? The top one is Uber. The second one is Airbnb. And the third one is Bitcoin, right? Anything that with English names in it gets a higher score. So um, actually only the, those are popular enough that we know that people will engage if we run this consultation. Everything else are kind of just 50-50 or even less. So we talk about Uber. But the problem becomes, of course, it's a polarized subject, just as the moderator just said. Because before we run this consultation, the taxi association already surrounded the Ministry of Transport and forcing that particular regulation against Uber. And they uh, threatened to escalate, to occupy, so to speak, if, if it's not swiftly uh, criminalized. And then Uber, of course, has its own lobbying powers among the drivers and the limousine um, associations and so on. So we face the case of a highly polarized, maybe four different parties, and then with no um, common ground for communication and with different ideas of which ministry is the owner of this particular subject. And we are not alone. Pretty much every single country is facing the same problem with Uber. This is a global problem. This is not just a Taiwan problem. So uh, the way we solve this, again, is by choosing a very specific issue. We don't talk about Uber Black. We don't talk about Uber Pop. We don't talk about you know, Uber Taxi, because there's no Uber Taxi in Taiwan. Um, we talk about using your own car to sometimes carry passengers and charge for it. It is a very specific issue, a very specific case. We don't talk about Uber the company, the business model, the platform, or sharing economy, or any large narratives of which there's no consensus whatsoever. And we say, we are asking for people's feelings. We are not asking for swift judgments. And then we crowdsource all the references for the informed part. And we promise to open up all the data for analysis. And we guarantee that after a month of this online sort of interaction, we will spend two hours of the ministry's time, of the minister's time, of three uh, relevant offices' time, of Uber representatives' time, of Taiwan Taxi's time, of the Taipei Association's time, and all the leading scholars to talk on something that is entirely crowdsourced from here. So this is what we say crowdsourced agenda. It means the agenda setting itself is left for the crowd. And using the setting, the crowd feels responsible and much higher quality opinions emerged. And we use a new interface called POLIS, P-L-L.I-S. It is designed for drivers and passengers on their mobile phones without access to a laptop computer. You just see one single opinion from somebody 
which you just have agree or disagree. If you agree or disagree, you move among the people. If you sign with Facebook or Twitter, you see your friends. Otherwise, it's just random um, famous people. And then you see your positions moved, and you see people's opinions clustered. And then, as you press agree or disagree, the next idea becomes available, and then you press agree or disagree. People usually press anywhere around 10 to 20 answers to see their positions among the people they know. Now, if after, say, nine press, they think their ideas, their feelings are not being reflected, they can type in something at the bottom of the screen, which then becomes a, a, a voting subject by everybody else. So this is a crowdsourced yes or no feeling, uh, expressing, reflecting platform called Polis. And then as we agreed, we publish all the data uh, as open data so people can run independent analysis. The first week, uh, people polarized into four groups, uh, largely Uber drivers, taxi drivers, Uber passengers, other passengers. And then they started lobbying each other so that within three days, we see them merging into two groups, one of them unifying under this Uber is a criminal uh, sentiment, and then the second one under a, you know, if I'm not a hurry, even if there's a lot of taxis, I still call Uber addiction kind of group. So uh, as we could say, this is very polarized, but we should also see if we multiply this by this or that by that, it's all less than half meaning that none of these things are consensus. These are very minority opinions. So because of the police interface emphasize consensus and displays the highest scores first, they are forced to propose more mild, more moderate feelings. Like this is not specific to Uber. This is the Ministry of the Transport's uh, responsibility. <clears throat> now this is a higher percentage. And now the group two says, you know, Currently, the only way for tra traditional taxi to survive is join the fleet. And this is not a government policy either. This is competition, right? So Uber has subverted this unwritten rule. It's great for independent taxi drivers. So just by saying this, they gained 2% because some of the taxi drivers defected to, to group two. So after three weeks of, three more weeks of running this deliberation online, we eventually see a set of reflections that everybody agrees that across the, the parts, across the groups, people can agree despite their objections on specific other issues, like the laws should change, that the safety is the number one priority, that the government should leverage this opportunity to challenge the taxi industry to introduce a similar rating system like Uber so that the drivers and riders would enjoy the same quality, which gets 95% across all the groups support, and so on. So, this becomes something concrete that we can talk on. And we chose a threshold of 80%. If something that gets a consensus of 80%, then it gets included in the agenda of uh, the deliberation, uh, the two-hour deliberation meeting. So there's about a, um, taxation, about registration, and about legalization, and so on. There are six very specific suggestions. And then the triple I ran a comparative analysis uh, based on the three dimensions of police issues and shows which countries already implemented some of the suggestions, and which countries are illegal, and which countries are currently contentious. And based on this factual data, and by the way, Uber also provided their own analysis based on the open data, uh, we ran a two-hour public deliberation which is aired online. And we invite all the stakeholders, and then they sit down and look at all the suggestions, the six uh, recommendations, the reflections, and everything from the crowdsource agenda, and just say their ideas, their interpretations, and everything is captured in transcripts. So that we can see in this meeting, people don't spend time um, doing, um, like, they, they don't spend time doing more reflection work or more factual discovery work. These are done for them. They just say whether they want to change their practice. They just say whether they want to compromise. They just say their ideas. So, for example, people demand the insurance statements, which the Uber says, okay, we will provide them. And the taxi uh, association says the main contention is actually Uber charged them for 20% for Uber taxi. If they're just willing to lower this percentage, they're willing to, to work with Uber. And then um, about the registration, uh, 
the minister, Jacqueline Tsai, had a very uh, fruitful dialogue. And then after this discussion, the four main stakeholders, their promise still does not entirely overlap. So we cannot actually just legalize Uber on the spot. But at least first, we know where everybody stands, where their acceptable ranges are, and it's in the public. And second, we also know that uh, each other, so we can talk to each other instead of burning each other's cars, like in other countries. And third, when we consultation on Airbnb, it has this very good effect that Airbnb already knows that we're going to do it this way. So we also started a consultation asking people whether you're an Airbnb owner, whether you have tried Airbnb, and whether what you think about Airbnb rulemaking and so on. And we also show a timeline of the Airbnb history. And then we also run a police. This time it's three main groups and so on. And then uh, when we finished the consultation after three weeks or so, there's broadly speaking three groups. One says one have to do registration, firefighting, invoice, and taxation. And the second group says uh, the government's only role is to do quality assurance. And then the third group says, you know, it carries potential risks, just like sellers on online C2C shopping sites. It's OK. The government stays out of it, and so on. So three different groups. But uh, actually, that was because uh, two days before the offline deliberation, Airbnb to all its Taiwan members, saying, go on Polis and voice your support on Airbnb. And so uh, instead of 4,000 votes, it's like 30,000 votes after the Airbnb email to all their members. So everything you just saw are pretty much from the Airbnb users already. So Airbnb users are divided into three groups. So before the Airbnb called everybody, uh, their members in Taiwan, we had a more kind of nuanced consensus, which we call group four. So the main con contention is that currently the tenants of Airbnb cannot uh, do insurance of legal protection. And this is the main, main contention. So we see that people are in favor of legalization. But personally, one third of people will not uh, book on Airbnb because of this issue. But they also think it's good for tourism in general, and backpackers especially, and that the government should ideas instead of just suppressing them with reactionary regulations. And the comparative analysis team, again, did their homework. So the thing with the two-hour public deliberation is that the Airbnb people came and said, you know, we read every word on the Uber deliberation. We know what you're going to ask. We did our homework. And whenever the screen shows one consensus from V Taiwan, they just say, we agree. We thought about it. And then the other slide. And then we agree. We thought about it. And so it, it became very, very easy. And then uh, we just settled on a set of promises among the hotels and the um, uh, Airbnb folks. And in fact, the hotel leader sent them this uh, huge volume of, uh, of legal hotels and says, you know, booking and Agoda charges us 15%. We know that you charge 5% or 2%. Please help us. And, and so on. So, so they, they were able to work together. And, and we uh, settled on a very reasonable set of regulation for Airbnb. So this, I guess, is the end of my talk. Uh, I would like to thank everybody who helped and implementing the VTOWN platform. We'll continue to work things on this uh, one step at a time. So one final slide. There's the, when GovZero first started, people often think collectivism is a lot of people, but they don't do anything. And hacktivism is a small amount of people, like us. But what we do with the VTOWN platform and the other uh, participatory platform is that to turn gradually people who can just press like on like to encourage them to spend more time. And by spending more time, also guaranteeing that we have a symmetry of attention. If you spend one minute of your time, we guarantee that the system spends other people's one minute of time or equivalent to, uh, to have due concern of your input. And then people are more invited to take 10 minutes to start discussions or make one hour for deliberations or even two hours of their time to participate in agenda setting. So it takes one step at a time, but it's ultimately worth it. Thank you. Thank you.